following has been developed by state and provincial agencies in association with the Agency for Instructional Television. Together, serving education. this co-op of yours and we do all the work some people planted some weeding and our job is to gather and to divide cooperation that's why we call it a co-op and another thing who planted all these squash i thought our crop was popcorn and pumpkins sally hayden's dad gave us a seed great now what do we do with them i hate squash they're funny looking I think they're kind of cute. Then we sell them to the bowling alley. Strike! Very funny. Popcorn and pumpkins we can sell, but squash, not a chance. Hmm. 264 butternut squash and six people in the co-op. How many squash will they get a piece? Too many. Let me figure this out. Hold it, Harvey. Twenty-six divided by six is four. Four times six is twenty-four. Twenty-four from twenty-six is two. Two divided by six is, that won't work. So let's say zero. And 24 divided by six is four. Four hundred, four squash each. What? That doesn't make sense. How can each share be 404 squash when we only have 264 squash? Oh. That doesn't make sense, does it? You need to estimate before you start working on a division problem. Why? So that you can get an idea of what the answer might be close to. I don't get it. Here, let me show you. You want to divide 264 squash among six people. Now, first you round the number to nearest 50 or 100. 200. 64 rounded would be 250. Oh, I forgot to tell you. It's better to round up in this kind of estimation. Why? Because then you'll know for sure that your final answer won't be more than your estimate. All right. Round it up to 300. Now, how many squash would each person get? 300 squash divided among six people. 50 squash each. Right. Now you know that your answer will only have two places. You couldn't possibly have a three-place answer like 404. And you know that your answer will be a little less than 50. That works every time? Every time. You know what? What? I don't believe it. Now <laughs> oh, what squash will each co-op look at? Well, how many squash will they see? Tom said my answer would have two places and be a little less than 50. Let's just see. Forty-four butternut squash apiece. That's two places and less than 50. I hate to admit it. But Tom's right. The 
squash weighing 513 pounds was grown by Harold Falk Jr. of Nineveh, Indiana in 1977. Wow. There we go again. And listen to this. No wonder we have so many squash. Mike Jovanovich of Laporta, Indiana grew 1,851 pounds of squash to one seed in 1979. Next year, oh no. This year, everybody gets 44 squash. Wrong. What? I bargained for popcorn and pumpkins, but no squash. That's not fair. There's nothing in the bylaws of this co-op that says you have to take your share. No, but. Then divide those squash five ways and count me out. Squash or... Ugh. I don't do like a squash sandwich. Now I have to refigure this whole squash problem. 264 rounded up to 300, divided by five. Yeah, sure. Fine. Okay. Nice. Bye. Brother, times like this, you find out who your friends are. What's the problem? Squash. 264 butternut squash and no takers. Not a single responsible person in that whole co-op. Now, wait a minute. We agreed to grow popcorn and pumpkins. Nobody said anything about squash. Even Sally K won't take a share. She even planted them. There's nothing worse than a squash explosion. Eat those green beans, Houston. What do I do with them? They're all over the barn. Well, I don't know, but uh, I'll soon need that space. Why don't you feed them to your rabbit friends? You stay out of this. Stop it, you two. Look, a special treat. Mmm. <laughs> Tastes great. Sure does. This may be the best pie you ever made, Mom. Say, Mom, what kind is it? Well, I found this funny-looking vegetable up in your room, and I just decided to make a pie out of it. Squash pie! <laughs> many, many years ago, there lived an ancient Chinese emperor who wanted to divide his wealth equally among his three sons, Wing, Wang, and Wong. He had three pagodas, so that was easy. One pagoda for each son. And he had 30 Chinese lanterns, so that was quite easy too. 30 divided by three is 10. 10 Chinese lanterns for each son. Lastly, the emperor had a collection of 285 precious pink pearls which he kept in a lovely Ming vase. But how much is 285 divided by 3? He had no idea what the answer should be. I think the answer should be close to... It's easy. 28 divided by 3 is 9 with 1 left over. 1 divided by 3 doesn't work, so that's 0. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. So we should have 905 precious pink pearls each. That can't be right. It's more than the number of pearls we had to start with. Let me try. Two divided by three, that won't go. But eight divided by three is two, with two left over. Twenty-five divided by three is eight, with one left over. So we should have twenty-eight pink pearls each, with one left over. You're goofball. How do you know? You have already solved this division problem? No, but I know what the answer should be close to. How, How can, can you, you know that? that? Very simple. It was easy to divide 30 Chinese lanterns by three, wasn't it? Yes. So, it would be easy to divide 300 pink pearls by three, wouldn't it? Of course it would, but there aren't 300 pink pearls, there are only 285. I know, but to find out what the answer will come close to, all I need to do is round up 285 to 300 and divide 300 by three, which is 100. Then I know that the answer will have to be close to 100. So it's obvious that Wing's answer of 905 is much too big. And Wang's answer of 28 is much too small. 
because neither answer is anywhere near 100. Wong is right. Now that I know what the answer should be close to, I'll have a go at doing the long division myself. Huh? Two divided by three won't go, but 28 divided by three is nine with one left over. Now, 15 divided by three is five. So the answer is 95. Is that close to 100? Yes, it is. So each son shall have 95 precious pink pearls. 95 for Wing, 95 for Wang, and 95 for Wong. Plus this lovely Ming vase for knowing how to estimate. Bye-bye, <laughs> Sally Kay. Honey, put your stuff together. I'll be back to pick you up in a little bit. All right, Dad. Bye. Bye. Look at all that squash. Oh well, serves them right. Hmm, looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pumpkins in each row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen rows of ten, plus one row of four. 140 plus four, 144 pumpkins. I might have known he wouldn't have the things divided yet. Good thing I brought my calculator. 144 pumpkins divided by six equals 55. 55 pumpkins, that's my share. See what you made me do. What are you doing? Your job, dividing the shares. What's this? My share. One hundred forty-four pumpkins in all. Round that up to one hundred fifty. Divided by six. A little less than 25 pumpkins in all. You've got a lot more than 25. 55. What? That's what my calculator says, and I trust it before I trust you, Houston Tally. But you can't do that. That's wrong. It's robbery. It's cheating. It's... Hey, what's the problem? Houston's so stubborn, he doesn't even believe my calculator. Look, Dad. 144 divided by 6 equals 55. You know what? This calculator does some strange things when the batteries are running down. I'd say the answer is closer to 25 per share. Hush, Houston. It wasn't my fault. I didn't say a word. It figures, a component of the Skills Essential to Learning project. was produced by the New Jersey Network. Under the supervision of the Agency for Instructional Television.